Hey there, what's up internet? My name is Black Light Attack, and today I've got for you another NU battle. This time it's against a fellow uh, TGN partner. His name is Hardy Tech Yo Yo, and this is actually, I believe, his first battle. Um, he was really eager to get into a game with me. Um, he was really excited to, uh, to battle me and to uh, have me, it seemed to me that he was eager to have me post uh, the battle as well. So um, that's, uh, that's what we got. Now luckily he does give me a pretty good game even though it's just his first game. To be fair, this is only my third game. I now have played a total of three Wi-Fi battles and you guys have seen all three of them. So looking at his team, I see a very defensive team. I expect this to be a lot of stalling out, probably a lot of whittling me down rather than hitting guys really hard all at once. Uh, because we have the uh, Proba Pass there, who's just a massive physical wall. Um, the Embor is a hard hitter, but is also very bulky. Licky Licky's almost pure defensively uh, based, but can hit pretty hard if he starts cursing up. And uh, Tangela and Wartortle are both very defensive. Eviolite Pokemon really Haunter is the only squishy hard hitter he has. I am scared of that Haunter, um, but really I, I just want to try to get my Braviary in. And I want to try to get some work done, hopefully, with this uh, shift tree. So, see what we can do here. So, right away, we're both going to lead into our stealth rockers. This is my slightly different build of a Gigalith. He is a bulky attacker um, support Pokemon. And he goes into his Probo Pass, who I assume is a pure physical wall. I make the stunningly noobish mistake of trying to toxic his Probo Pass. Totally forgetting, not that he is a steel type, but actually that toxic doesn't affect steel types, which is pretty much the most basic, stupid mistake you can make. Uh, I thought I was being very smart, thought that we would trade stealth rocks, um, but really what I should have done is just gone for the stealth rock on the first turn like he did, and I'm going to pay for it by taking a big chunk of damage from that earth power, when it could have been in my favor by uh, basically bringing him down to 1 HP, because I do carry the earthquake, which is four times effective against this guy, so I could have broken, or at least brought him down to his sturdy and left him with 1 HP and basically doomed him. And then, uh, and then switched out of the second Earth Power into my Braviary. That's, I end up having to do that prematurely without getting any damage on this guy. And of course, I'm going to have to take a Volt Switch for it. I'm going to go straight for the Crush Claw, pretending that I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm feigning a Choice Set on this guy, and I want to act like I'm locked into a, into a normal Stab attack. And that ends up doing quite a bit of damage uh, to this War Turtle. Now, this guy carries Sheer Force, and if Sheer Force... Um, is activated on, on an attack and you have a life orb, the life orb will still boost the attack but it, you won't take recoil and it's a good way to, to uh, feign a choice band set. But uh, unfortunately I'm left pretty weak and I don't really have time to stick around and feign choices anymore because I'm afraid of that Scald. I do get a, get a, a decent amount of damage on his War Turtle, but he switches out I guess realizing that uh, I am doing quite a bit of damage to him and I guess he doesn't want to trade Pokemon at this point. Uh, so I go into my Floatzel to scare him out, but he already switched into Probo Pass. Luckily his Sturdy is broken due to Stealth Rock. And I do carry the Brick Break, which is four times effective, and Choice Banded. That is going to deal a lot of damage. He's going to go into Tangela, who's um, a physical wall and takes just a ton of damage. I know he's not really going to take much from a Brick Break, which I'm locked into. And I'm expecting the Sleep Powder because Tangela always loves to throw the Sleep Powder. So I go into my Shift Tree in order to scare him out. I go for the Nasty Plot on the Switch. Turns out he doesn't switch. He goes for a Hidden Power. I'm not exactly sure what Hidden Power, power that was. Um, normally, I expect Tangela to carry an HP Fire or an HP Ice. Um, that, did ne that did neutral damage, so um, I have no idea what HP that was. Um, I, I could only guess. HP Rock for Fire types, that's my best guess, but he goes out into uh, Embor, and now that even though I have two uh, nasty plots under my belt, um, I'm almost positive this thing is going to outspeed me because most Embors are scarfed, so I'm going to go into my Physical Wall Weezing in order to absorb the attack, and then there's a bit of a plot twist, that does a ton of damage, now I know that this guy has to be Choice Bandit, no way a Choice Scarfed Embor could have done that much to such a physically bulky Pokemon as Weezing. Um, so I'm going to call Weezing out, knowing that he can't take another attack. I'm going to go into Gigalith, knowing that he can because he resists, and hoping to just rack up a little bit more residual damage. I want to keep my Weezing around for later. I don't really mind too much if Gigalith dies, um, even though I am kind of disappointed that my rocks are down. So uh, just hoping that maybe he 
over predicts or something, I go for the stealth rock. He switches out. I have no idea why he switched out there because he totally had me where he wanted me and um, and because he decided to switch out into his Tangela to try to scare me out of my Gigalith, um, I end up getting up stealth rocks again and that um, becomes pretty major later on. So obviously I don't want to stick around for a Giga Drain or a Sleep Powder or whatever this thing wants to do to me, so I'm going to go back out in my ship tree, which is going to resist pretty much anything this guy can throw at him, barring another one of those uh, burly HPs. Stangla does actually have a pretty good uh, special attack stat. Now, he hits me really hard with that. Even though it doesn't kill me, um, it's going to resist, but he crits me. Don't worry, I'll get him back for that later. Um, so I guess he's worried that I'm going to start setting up nasty plots again, but really I was just trying to get a little bit more life back, and I I ended up going for the Giga Drain, not even predicting anything. I predicted him to try to start like knocking off or maybe um, maybe trying to sleep out or predicting a switch, but I was just going for a Giga Drain uh, just to get a little bit more health back. Ends up catching his War Turtle and killing it instantly, which is awesome because I get a little bit of health back, which is almost negated by um, Life Orb Recoil. Here I'm expecting him to do some sort of supporty move. I don't know if he's going to try to uh, wish or, or heal bell or something. Um, actually, I don't think I have any status, so obviously not heal bell. So I go for the nasty plot. Turns out he protects, which is even better because that means he did literally nothing while I set up. And I'm going to hit him and pay him back for that crit, believe it or not. I believe this had to have mattered. I can't imagine that even a plus two shift tree could one hit KO with Giga Drain. Possibly that, that crit didn't matter. I should probably run the damage calcs on that. I will let you know if I find out. But um, end up one hit KO his Licky Licky, which makes me very happy because I'm afraid of Licky Licky. Now as Haunter comes out, I predict that he is going to uh, substitute uh, waiting to scare me out. So I go for the Dark Pulls to try to uh, cut the substitute down. Doesn't turn out that way. Turns out he's just going for a Life Orb Sludge Bomb. So this is really the point that I realize he doesn't like to make a lot of predictions. He's going to play it pretty straightforward and basically try to out muscle me at this point. Uh, I'm going to send him my Gigalith just to, just to die here. I was still predicting him to go for the Substitute, so I wanted to Rock Blast him out of the Substitute, but obviously he's just going to hit me with the Shadow Bo Ball because it will kill for that range. Uh, I'm not sure if he knows that um, Floatzel carries Crunch, so I decided to just go straight for the Crunch, not to predict or anything. He makes a nice move and decides to wall it with his Tangela. Now you may have noticed that my Braviary, who uh, is one of the guys that this team was built around, uh, is just waiting in the wings, literally waiting to die to Stealth Rock. So this is the moment. I send him in to take the Stealth Rock damage and just die. Uh, totally worth it holding on to him all that time. I don't have a Rapid Spinner, I couldn't have saved him, but um, I expected a Sleep Powder there. He actually is just going for a Giga Drain, uh, I guess just trying to kill my Weasel, or my Floatzel rather, sorry. And uh, I'm not definitely not going to stay in for that. Now I'm still fearing a Sleep Powder from this guy, so I go into my Noghog, my Grumpig, and taunt him. And so far I've done a really good job of shutting down those Sleep Powders, which are really freaking annoying. I hate that move, it's very dangerous. And so far I've done a pretty good job of keeping them out and away. So he's going to go straight into his uh, into his Haunter, and I predict the switch hit him with a Thunder Wave. This is super critical because Haunter is the only thing left that can outspeed my team now that I know his Embor is, uh, is banded. Neither of us have particularly speedy teams, but mine is notably speedier after Haunter's out of the way. So I'm going to Thunder Wave him, um, predicting him to come in to try to scare the Psychic Grumpy out. And uh, I hit him with a super effective Psy Shock, and he's finally going to go down. And now I'm not really fearing anything uh, all that much. I do still have the issue of the uh, of the Embor here, but um, I know that Weezing is at least going to be able to take a few attacks. So I send him out to uh, to take what I assume is going to be a Flare Blitz, knowing that he's probably just going in to die. For some reason, he goes for the Earthquake, and that's even better because you know the Blob isn't going to take anything be due to uh, due to the Levitate, and he's now locked into that, so he has to switch out. Um, and I know he's going to go into Tangela now, because what other choice does he have? And that allows me to go for the Sludge Bomb on the Switch, which is going to deal a ton of damage because it's stab, super effective, and Tangela's special defense is not that fantastic. Get a little bit of hacks here because I get the poison and it ends up just finishing him off in one turn. But I'm not really sure that that mattered because, to be honest, even if he sleep powdered me, I basically just would have sat there and walled him until he decided to uh, until he decided to wake up and finish him off with the Sludge Bomb. And uh, and I basically would have just left Weezing in to die and then just had um, Floatzel come in and revenge kill everything. So, don't really think that mattered too much. I don't know what his last attack is, I assume he's got a fighting stab in there somewhere. He's got. He's shown me that he has the Earthquake and the Flare Blitz, um, but he makes, uh, I assume unless he had the Wild Charge, which is pretty standard, his, his best um, method of attack here was the Flare Blitz, but 
Unfortunately for him, I just barely don't kill him and his flare blitz is going to kill him. He takes the honorable way out. He doesn't run away or anything. He mans up and kills himself. And that will be the end of the game. So that was a great game, Hardy. I enjoyed playing with you. Everybody give Hardy a good round of applause for a good first game. He may have some things to learn, but I tried the Toxic of Provo Pass not 10 minutes ago. So, anyway guys, like the video if you liked it. You can always subscribe for more, and my name is Black Light Attack. Take it easy.